Hi, welcome to another video on how to create 3D characters and avatars in Blender and bring them into Unreal Engine. Last time in the series, we talked about rigs and I outlined the process of creating one for the VTuber that we're working on. We also discussed why you should start rigging your base mesh and skinning it before moving on to other details on your character like clothing, hair, and other attached meshes. We'll talk more about this. This video is going to be a quick and broad overview of skinning, what it is and how it fits into our process, as well as a quick conversation about using auto rigging and voxel heat diffusion skinning plugins. Woody, this is really boring. I want to build stylized characters. I want to make details and textures. I want to have fun. I hear you. Here's why we're rigging and skinning our character first. If you don't want to spend money on auto rig or voxel heat, rigging our character and skinning it as a base mesh will be the simplest way to manage our rig and skin data over the rest of the process. With tools like auto rig and voxel heat, we can create our bone system at any time. If we manually create our rig and skin our base mesh, then as we continue building our avatar, we can clone parts of our base mesh and bring all the bone and weight data with that geometry. Like these eyes I cloned from the character's head. Clothing is the best example as you want to have it be the very same weight painting data that's on your base mesh. You want things to stay attached and you don't want any arms flying out of any sleeves or worse. Blender is unable to do a good job at handling all this information at a later time. Things can go wrong. Things can go very, very wrong. In Blender, the task of skinning is done through the weight painting process. I'll share a couple of basic ideas about weight painting as well as some tricks I learned to get out of sticky situations while doing it. Ultimately, I am not a rigging expert, but there are good resources out there for going deeper. One is Royal Skies LLC, who is a great resource for Blender and Unity artists that are building their rigs. Every time I've Googled a problem about rigging in Blender, this guy pops up. Link to that channel in the description. Now, before you do anything else, you're going to want to apply all your modifiers. This is really, really important because they can sort of interfere, especially subdivision surface. So if you're doing this right, your base mesh should look something like this. Just select the mesh and then select the skeleton and press Command P and select automatic weights. We're going to have to change it after we've generated those weights. To get into weight painting mode, simply click on your mesh and then press Control Tab to open up the little radial menu. Now press 7 or click weight paint. Now, whatever vertex group we select is what will be visible on the mesh and will be available for editing. Now, this can get really annoying to go through and test all of these out. Now, one way I like to move around a little bit faster is pressing shift and right click, and then I can select whatever bones are nearby. So you can see the neck here. You can see the clavicle. Remember that in weight painting, anything that is red is active and attached to the bone completely. Anything that is blue is entirely unaffected by that bone. And then you have all of these middle colors, which go from cool to warm, which also matter quite a bit. The tools we have at our disposal are draw, blur, average, smear, and gradient. And we have a color pickle, color pickle. <laughs> and we have a color picker as well. The tools I mainly use are draw and gradient. Let's talk about drawing. You can move weight here on this slider to be able to select red and blue. The strength here is also really important. Think of this as like Photoshop opacity. For this character, I started off with creating automatic weights and started drawing on the bones that I felt needed adjustments. However, I made a huge mistake. Typically, you want to turn on X mirror to copy over symmetrical bone data. I, like an idiot, did not do that. You may notice initially that Blender doesn't seem to have a comprehensive way to mirror over weight data if you forgot to turn on X mirror. I found a mirror option up in the menu, but I found that it didn't have a great way to copy over in the way that I wanted. It could symmetrize things, but it couldn't copy over into other groups. Or if it copied over from other groups, it just switched things around and it didn't clone anything. And if that doesn't make sense, just, you know, wait till you find yourself in this pickle and then come back to this video. So here's my method of copying over the data. Have to do two things. One, we're gonna have to find the ones we like, upper arm L in this case. It's really good. So I'm gonna Alt Tab, and I'm gonna go to Weight Paint. So you can see upper arm L kind of actually got things where I want them to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Copy vertex group. I'm gonna find my upper arm. And I'm just going to get rid of it. It still exists, but 
It's not the same thing. And I name it like that. So if I go into weights and I go into mirror, suddenly everything transfers quite nicely. You can see I'm missing a couple here, but not it's not that big a deal. We can fix this one pretty easy. Maybe this is my fault, but later on when going back to a file, I actually found that one of my bones had retained the old name of the copy and hadn't retained the clavicle underscore R name. I really love the gradient tool. It really lets us like basically just slide everything over as much as we want all over camera wide and it'll get copied to the back as well. You can see here it kind of matters where we're brushing things and stuff. I have my strength pulled down, I pull all the way up. You can see I can just absolutely select everything. Now this is sort of rough, however it's, it's helpful in a specific way I'll explain. You'll notice that unlike other painting systems in Blender, there's no fill tool for weight painting. The gradient tool is great for this. Simply select all of the geometry you want to change in edit mode, and then click this little button here to create a mask. Then circle around with the mouse until you've finally covered the whole space. This is the nuclear option, but it's often the right one. It's fantastic for robots and hard surface characters that don't bend at all and have total bone attachment. The reason I had such a slow time doing all of this is because I'm pretty inexperienced as a weight painter. I often skip much of this process and use a specific plugin for my weight painting. I use Voxel Heat Diffusion Skinning. It's a plugin you can get on the Blender Marketplace. Voxel Heat is great, but there's not a lot of documentation for it. So here's a quick side by side. I'm gonna select everything, and then I'm gonna shift click on the skeleton to make sure it's the active selection. Now I'm gonna press Command P, and then I'm going to armature deform with automatic weights. Now, when we do this, you can see we're immediately having a problem. These pants are not, not doing well. The bones are doing okay. The clothing actually looks fine, but it's because the clothing is sharing data with the base mesh. And you can see all of these little belt loops here are going flying. Now, the worst of it all is probably going to be up here in the face. You can see the eyebrows are falling off eyes are moving. We might not have selected the eyebrows, but this is it. Now we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to select everything. Suddenly you'll see that this new menu appears. Now you may have noticed this before. Mesh Online, which is the company that makes this, appears whenever we have everything selected. So I'm going to select our sort of our basic settings here and we're going to see if we can spot the difference. Now you'll also notice this open when you first see it, the surface heat diffuse skinning. This is actually a different thing. This is a little bit more like Blender's standard weight automation. This is a surface thing. This is not a voxel thing. So let's go ahead and hide that from ourselves so we don't get confused. So I'm going to just click it and see what happens. So now let's see the difference here. Now you can see we have like a little bit of artifacting here. Like if I move the, the face, you can see like I have a couple of things that are sort of stuck vertices. And I'm not sure why that's happening, but that's actually pretty rare. I'm also not crazy about this distortion, but it's a pretty extreme pose. It might not ever look that bad when we're actually doing the mocap. Ultimately for the head, I like to go back through with the gradient tool and then make everything as red as possible in order to maintain shape and attachment. So I'm not sure what's going on. And some of these we should be able to just fix. Like you see here, everything on the face is working just fine, except for these things for some reason. So I'm going to select that and I'm just going to, you know, going to go into weight paint here. Don't freak out if you see some of this stuff. Ah, so it's probably this situation here. The neck is not affecting this upper part. So I'm going to get my color picker here and sort of sample that weight. And then now I'm just going to use this as a way to continue to just kind of, you know, put full strength here and I'm going to apply that fully. Now I'm going to guess the head is also a little bit weird here. Grab that color picker again, get that different amount. And then you can see I've got this perfectly. Now I'm not sure why we had this little error, but you can see this is a lot easier to fix than weight painting everything from scratch. I typically use default settings and then double them if I'm getting poor results. I have a pretty strong CPU configuration, so your mileage may vary with that. 
Fox Elite is great, but I found it to be pretty poor at hands, too. Later on in the process, after I separated my meshes, use Blender's automatic weights for just the hands after I've separated them. Voxel Heat can also play really nicely with clothing. So if you do add a piece of clothing later and it's not based on the weights that we're setting up with our base mesh, you can absolutely use Voxel Heat to be able to fix the situation. Well, typically it's a best practice to delete any base mesh under the skin that might be visible. I found Voxel Heat is sometimes so good that I can just leave in a ton of my data and nothing goes wrong. Don't chance it though, please don't do this. And that's everything I have to contribute on the subject of skinning. As always, there's a link in the description to our Discord channel where you can chime in with others about how to create stylized characters and all of that good stuff. <laughs>